Django has a variety of command line utilities accessible from the Django admin pi or the manage pi wrapper. In this tutorial, we work towards creating our own custom Django management commands. So I'm going to focus on setting up some basic commands we can run from the terminal. So we'll go through some basic configuration and then we'll have a look at handling arguments. So first up, we need to understand where we place the management commands. So imagine you created a new project called proj and then you create a new application called app. So management commands are stored or they're placed inside of the application inside of a folder called management and then in a folder called commands. So we then make the name of the file with a pi file and then the name of the command in this case, name of command.py is also the name of the command. So if I were to build this command, I'd need to actually then type in manage.py name of command. So that's how I would invoke that command. So if you take a look through the Django documentation, you will find that there's two types of commands that you can build. A private command, which starts with the underscore, and then the not private command, which you can run from the terminal. So there might be some instances where your application, where you want your application to run a command from the managed PY. So this is why you would create a private command. And like I said, the other commands here that don't have the underscore, we can run these from the command line. So I've gone ahead and built a new Django project. It's called proj. And then I've made a new application called app. So inside of here, we've got the new folder which I've created called management and then inside of that we've got the new folder called commands. So this is where I'm going to place my commands. So let's just start by building a simple command and just show that it's working in the terminal. So in the command folder I'll create a new file. I'm just going to call this name gen for name generator.py. So to quote from the manual if we're going to make a command, we need to define a class called command and that extends the base command. So here we're going to import the base command first, and then we're going to create a random string. So we just import that in and we build the class command and we're extending from the base command. Okay, so we can add some help documentation to display um, in the help function by utilizing help, just creating a variable help. And then we create a function and inside of our function, first of all, we get a random string. This is going to be placed in a variable name and then we're going to output it. I'm just going to out output the name here. Um, so that's what's going to be outputted, a random name. So the command is going to be called name gen and this is going to output a just a random string. I'm going to call this the Elon Musk baby name generator. So probably the most common theme when students try this out is that they forget to register the app in the settings file. So just make sure that's working otherwise the commands won't work. So we can head back into the terminal now and try out our new Elon Musk baby name generator by typing in PY and then um, manage py, manage py, and then the name, so the name gen. Now, of course, if you want to initiate the help text, we can use the switch, and that will bring up the text that we had placed. And just going back, if I run the command again, you can now see I've got the baby ge name generator started. So that just proves that um, the functionality is working. So to create a basic custom command that's really the the main principles here we extend from the base command um, here like i said we're just creating a random string so i import that in and here we need a class called command and we extend from the base command so we add the help text and then we head on into the function and you can see that i've just generated a random name and i've outputted it to the terminal so here's an example of a custom command whereby we create random users for the database and we then specify the argument. We specify the number of users we want to build. So the argument starts off here 
or sorry, the um, custom command starts off with importing the user database so we can access the user database to add new users. And then we're going to extend from the base command and we're also going to use random strings again. So we've got the mandatory class command and we're going to extend from the base command. And then we're going to set up our help text again for this random user generator, database random user generator. And then we set up now our new argument. So this is the first argument that we can pass after setting the command in the terminal. And you can see that we um, define it as quantity and we set up some help text. Okay, so once that's done, we now set up a new function whereby we take this new attribute and then we're just running a loop here. So we get a, a random string for a username and then also a password. And then we just put that into the database using the objects. And you can see here that we add a new user to the user table um, with the username, the random string username and then the random string password. So let's just see this in action. So I'll just save that. So heading back to the terminal, I'm just going to run this command. So manage.py and this was called, if you remember, just going back. We called this user gen. So again, the name of the file is also the name of the command. And then the first argument we're going to pass is how many users we want to create. So in this case, two, you could use more. So I let that run and that's run. So at the moment, there's no confirmation, but if we go back into the database and just refresh the database, you can see that two random users have been built. And notice they're not staff users, they're just general users, because if you look back here, we're just create, using create user. So going back into the code here, I've created a STD out to write a simple piece of text here, user, username and password that's been generated, account created. So let's just run this again and it should just loop through and just output the names of the users that we build. There we go. So of course it might be that you want to generate administrator accounts. So here we're going to add a new argument and this time we're going to use a switch here, uh, minus A, and that's going to refer to admin. So this is going to define an admin account. And then we're just going to, again, recreate this function. So we've got quantity and now we've got also admin. So we're going to pass in that and then we we'll just loop this out. So we, again, we just create a username and password, a random username and password. And then we'll say if admin, so if the admin has been defined, then we're going to create a, a super user, an admin user using the random string. Else we're going to create a, a normal user. And then we're just going to print that out to the screen. So here what we have now is we have a positional argument, the quantity. So that needs to be placed or defined after the command. And here we have a flag argument, which is an optional argument that we can pass into our command. So there's two different types of arguments that we've created here. Apologies if I didn't make that clear. So let's just put this in action. We're going to run the py manage again, and then the user gen. So first of all, we had the positional argument, which isn't optional. So if I don't include it, we'll get an error. So let's define how many users we want to build. And now we've got the optional argument for administrators. So this is where we built the flag, uh, which is A. So if I run that, you can see that we've created two new users. I go to my browser and I refresh. And you can see now that we've created, well, there's lots more accounts here, but we've created two new users. So we just delete some of these. So I'll just run that command again and just try that out again. I've refreshed that and we've created two new users and they're both admin users. So just to finish off, we'll go through one more example. Here I've created a new command 
or new file called user del for user delete. So here we're going to delete users from a database. So we need access again to the users model. And then we also then need to import the base command because we need to extend from it and we need the class command. So I set up the help text and then create a new function here. So these are the arguments, which is going to be user ID. So this command, we're going to type in manage py, then user del, and then we're going to type in the user IDs or the user ID of the users we want to delete in the database. So here we're going to pass in multiple users. So we can type in here, user one, two, three, four, ten, etc., in the command or the terminal. And this is obviously integers. So, and we've got some help text. So once we've done that, we then create a new function. So we pass in the arguments and capture them. And then we've got a simple loop here. So we just loop through if we've got multiple users and then just delete the users based upon the user IDs we enter in the terminal. And then we just output the fact that they've been deleted. And then of course, if they don't exist, we'll just output the fact that the user doesn't exist in the database. So let's go ahead and try this. So this is user del. So back in the command prompt, manage py, and then user del, and then we're going to delete user 10, 11, and 12, based upon the user IDs. So user 10 and 11 doesn't exist, but 12 does, and it has been deleted. So LCI. So if I go back into my command prompt, apologies, my browser, um, yeah, it's been deleted from the database. So let's just delete some more. So if I go back into the command prompt, I think the users start from around about 12. So we deleted 12, so 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So we delete those. There we go. So we'll go back in here. This list should start to get a little bit smaller. And there we go. So the users have been deleted. So hopefully that will help you towards writing custom Django admin commands, or at least get you started thinking about developing custom commands and some of the different parameters and principles of creating custom commands. Of course, you can head over to the Django project.com documentation where you'll find a little bit more about obviously writing custom Django admin commands. So for this tutorial, we worked towards creating custom Django management commands. We covered basic configuration and then some of the handling arguments that are available.